have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. USA. I'm Andy Hum. Uh, I'm Ann Northrup, and here is the <laughs> Rainbow White House. Yes, we are both subscribers to the New Yorker. We're and New Yorkers. The, the New Yorker very brilliantly put on its cover. Put, put the slide week. up so that yeah. everybody can see it yeah, right now. They can't see it from yeah. us. Yeah. They what turn a, the a, pillars <laughs> of the White House into a rainbow flag. Yes, there it is. And very why is clever. That? Because you might have heard on the news. <laughs> that the president had a big announcement this week. He yes. did indeed uh, come out for same-sex marriage. Why does he do this the day after we tape the show <laughs> last week and throw us off? But he did. God knows what will happen this week. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and, not, and look, it's what we're going to talk about for probably for the first half hour. But... Also, a lot of other powerful Democrats came out in the wake of the president's announcement. Well, that's one of the ripple effects, which I think is so interesting and exciting. There are pros and cons to this. There are nuances. We will try to explain it all to you because God knows the mainstream media uh. and commentators and politicians have done a really lousy job. So we'll try to do a better job. But in the wake of all this, uh, lest you think the uh, tipping point had been fully reached, Colorado's Republican House leader single-handedly killed a civil union bill despite the fact that the votes were there on the floor to pass it. Uh and then there's uh, North Carolina, which has banned recognition, uh, not just of same-sex marriage, but any domestic union that is not a heterosexual marriage. And that is already producing bad results that we'll tell you about. And then, of course, in the wake of all this marriage discussion, Mitt Romney, uh, in a very clever move by the Washington Post, uh, got caught uh, in the midst of this story that he had assaulted a gay student when they were at a Michigan prep school together. By the way, I don't think it matters whether the kid was gay, but that's a further discussion we'll get to. Well, he so said he's sorry anyway, but he chuckled when he referred to it. Was it nervous laughter? Who knows? And if you're concerned about the present, we're going to show you what he thinks about your rights. Um, a lesbian couple at a Kentucky Catholic high school were barred from going to their prom, so they held one outside with surprising results. Uh, transgender rights took a big step forward in Argentina. Very horrifying news from Iran. And a Food and Drug Administration Advisory Committee has endorsed the first drug meant to prevent HIV infection. No word from the FDA itself yet, but uh, could be uh, a move in that direction. A punk rock star is transitioning from man to woman. But John Travolta is not transitioning. He is stuck in his old uh, stance of being sued by several men for inappropriate touching. And we'll tell you about a big honor, national honor, for Ellen DeGeneres. But it all starts with Obama. <coughs> Our first gay president. No, he isn't. Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> James Buchanan. Now, Buchanan was gay baited in his day. Yes, but, and uh, he talked about. But there is uh, dispute about uh, Lincoln. I think is much, more, much closer, most, much, much. I more disagree. Likely. There are but, a lot of quotes from Buchanan about his uh, romantic attachments to men. Okay, maybe. <laughs> Nonetheless, didn't, we didn't hold the candle. We weren't at the gay White House. <laughs> But last Wednesday, in the wake of Vice President Joe Biden's uh, fumfering around on Meet the Press about how he was absolutely comfortable with men marrying men and women marrying women, the President of the United States sat down with closet case Robin Roberts <laughs> of Good Morning America. She was summoned to run down to Washington you know, for an he, emergency interview. He puts his job on the line, but she sits there in her little boxy closet. I kept waiting for him to turn to her and say, and you, Robin? Yeah. But no, we didn't have that. So there are conflicting stories on how this actually came about. The White House is now claiming that What he came had, about? What happened? Well, his, He came out for same-sex marriage. He did. Uh, the White House claims, and he claimed on The View this week, 
that he had made a decision that he was going to make a public announcement of his support for same-sex marriage, that he made this decision some months ago. One wonders why he didn't do anything about it then. And that he assumed that somewhere along the way he would be asked and he would give this answer. Or if that didn't appear to be happening, he would find a way to announce it before the well, convention Sort of like Mor Morris Sendak, you know? He said, nobody ever asked me if I was gay. <laughs> well, he has been asked, and he knew it was an issue because the LGBT community has been asking him to come out about this for a long time. So anyway, then it all happened because of the Biden announcement, because people started being asked directly, and he could no longer uh, avoid it. He was scheduled to be on The View. There was some talk about he expected to be asked it there, and he was planning to give an answer, but instead he did this. Now, he did not schedule a speech. He did not stand up in front of the American people and say, I want you to know that I'm in favor of this. I think we should all be in favor. You of mean this. like Jack Kennedy on civil rights when he finally gave that speech on television and said, you know, or uh, Lyndon Johnson or anybody right. making some speech. He instead put himself in a much more passive position and ended up saying this was his personal uh, uh, opinion. And that he, uh, this is, when I read the whole transcript of it, and you can see the whole interview on ABC News. Uh, but he said at one point that he thought the discussion in states was a healthy debate, a healthy process. And I thought to myself when I read that, Really? Would he say the same thing about uh, other civil rights issues? Uh, that it should be debated state by state? I don't want to get into defending him because I think that we should have a court declaration that all these constitutional amendments are unconstitutional. Absolutely. And that people of the same sex should be able to marry everywhere. As a civil right. But even in our community, there has been some uh, feeling, not about this, but in general, that the fact that it is proceeding slowly state by state is giving people a chance to get comfortable with it, and then we can have it for everybody. The thing we're most likely to get, and we're if we get it, we're partly going to get it from the Obama Justice Department, is a court declaration that the federal government will recognize the legal same-sex marriages that are taking place in the states. And when that happens, more states are going to say, well, we might as well give them states' rights as well. Uh, I don't like, of course I don't like the term states' rights, and of course I think what the states are doing is unconstitutional, but do you, do you want a you know, de well, declaration I, uh, right it, now? It has and then what's going to happen in Alabama? You want to see the second civil war... What's Alabama going to, I'm sorry to single out Alabama, it's my usual example, but you did vote 81 to 19 percent down there for a constitutional amendment, unlike 61 to 39, 39 in, in North, North Carolina, Carolina last I, week. Uh, no, I agree with you. You're right that a, a gradualist process is uh, a little uh, safer, and it has been pointed out that the Supreme Court Roe v. Wade decision uh, created an enormous backlash that has brought a lot of trouble on reproductive rights. Right. And let's not forget that the majority of the country, you know, if you say, do you support same-sex marriage, that 51% say yes, but then if you say, do you support same-sex marriage or, or just civil unions, 38% say marriage, another 24% or something say civil unions. So the country is not there on this, on marriage, as has been proven in every one of these uh, referenda. Politically, I agree with you. Politically, ago. I agree with you. I just wish there were a little more clarity about what the legal situation really is, that he is right to say that states have always decided what marriage is. It is the Defense of Marriage Act, which he has taken to calling the Defense Against Marriage Act, not correct, um, that federalized it. But what we need is to federalize the availability of benefits to people who are legally married in whatever state. And now that we're talking about it, it makes yeah. me wonder, yes, yeah, states do determine, like, can you marry your first cousin, for instance? What about gays marrying their first cousins? They're not going to have kids with each other. Uh, you know, I'm wondering how that's all going to play out. Well, I... <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> can we not get to that yet? I'm just can we, saying. Can we, speaking of gradualism, well, you know, there's a lot, I would well, not the, like to get to challenging the first right. cousin Go, rule. Going back to our, going back to our discussion, yeah. it's fascinating the way some right-wingers have come out and said, 
oh, gays, you're being, you're being really screwed by Obama on this. Now, first of all, we need to say, folks, that when we heard this, when people heard this announcement, yeah. it was like a weight was lifted off our shoulders. Well, this was a big yes. gay moment in the, in yes. the country. Did, did we put up the uh, Newsweek cover yet? Yeah. Put up the news. Yeah. yeah, the first gay president. Well, and that's a play on the whole thing about uh, Clinton Bill Clinton. Being, yeah, they're calling him the first female president Bill now, too. Bill Clinton <laughs> being the first black president, uh, you know. I, I think the halo's a bit much. It's a story by Andrew Sullivan there yeah. in, in Newsweek. Uh, 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 one politi- one right-wing political commentator said, this is $20 million in in-kind contributions to Romney, this cover. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and then Lawrence O'Donnell said, it, he said this, in this idiot country, a lot of people are really going to believe he's gay now, just like they believe he's a Muslim and that he doesn't have a birth, you know, he was born elsewhere and that everything else. They will believe that. Oh, well. I, oh, you don't believe that, do you? Yeah, I also think happening in May with the uh, election in November, uh, six months hence, uh, that a lot of this will disappear by then. And I think a lot of the people who are angry at him are people who are going to vote for him anyway, and particularly six months down the road. I'm amused that the log cabin Republicans took the opportunity to say, a day late and a dollar short. Really? What about your candidate? In well, fact, let's look at what Mitt Romney had to say uh, in answer to Obama about his opinion about uh, marriage rights and marriage equality. Well, when these uh, issues were raised in my state of Massachusetts, I indicated my view, which is I do not favor um, uh, marriage between people of the same gender, and I don't favor civil unions if, if, if they're identical to marriage other than by name. Uh, my view is that domestic partnership benefits, hospital visitation rights and the like, uh, are appropriate, but that uh, the others are not. Of course, by not by not uh, by answering the question that way, you're going to get asked, Mitt, uh, all the way down the line, which rights do you think we should not have that are quote unquote identical to marriage? Uh, I only wish reporters were smart enough to ask that question. So far, they haven't been. Right. Although I mean, they sort of tripped him up ask- on adoption. Well, and, and, you know, on adoption, he, he's giving the answer uh, that first he said he was fine with it. Mm-hmm. And then he said, well, I didn't really mean I'm fine with it. I just mean it's the law. I mean, they're allowed to adopt uh, everywhere but one state. Well, in fact, we're allowed to adopt in every state as individuals. But uh, same-sex couples are not allowed to adopt in many, many, many states. Very patchwork. Uh, and second parent adoption and all that other kind of stuff is, yeah. But to go back to the reaction to the president, um, My first reaction was, okay, about time, yes, I'm glad this happened. But I found within 24 hours, I was really overwhelmed with uh, happiness about this, that I could see it having a, a really kind of transcendent effect, that it really made a difference to have the President of the United States come out for full equality as opposed to second-class citizenship. And I could begin to see the ripples of this. I could understand how this would give, and we'll go through the list, a lot of politicians cover now to come out more aggressively, that it could help with all the ballot referenda in November in Minnesota, Maine, Washington, and Maryland, that it could even help the Supreme Court uh, decide in our favor on the DOMA cases and on the Prop 8 case, that this really could be a sea change. Yes. Uh, to have, because I think everyone, and it certainly takes away from the Republicans like Chris Christie the right to say, my position is the same as Barack Obama's. You know, I'm so sick of that. Well, and now Elizabeth that's Hasselbeck over. tried to act like Romney had the same position as Obama because he's, that you both believe it should be left to the states. Well, Romney doesn't believe it. And of course, President Obama answered this on The View and said, Romney doesn't believe he should be left to the states. He believes in a constitutional amendment that would wipe it out forever in every state. Well, uh, Uh, She's right in the sense that he has said both those things. He has said states should decide, and then he has said he's for a federal constitutional amendment. Uh, She's picking and choosing a little. But she, I will give her credit, has come around to full support for marriage equality. I'm a little concerned about that Sherry Shepard, who has been keeping her her mouth mouth shut shut for the last (laughs) week. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yes, uh, this is it's, it is it is a, it is an immense cultural moment. It uh, is. For this. It's just like what happened when I co- you know when I covered the gay pride parade last year, to shockingly see the intense joy because same sex marriage had just passed. They In were New cele- York. They were celebrating 
Andrew Cuomo, who came very late to support for same-sex yeah. marriage. Yeah, watch out but, for him as a presidential well, candidate. Just saying that valid people feel validated when the big guy or woman says you're okay. It's just something that happens with people. We should all have more security in ourselves not to feel that way, yeah. but it happens. And it unleashes everyone. The uh, governor of Illinois, Pat Quinn, who signed a civil unions bill last year but was against marriage equality, has now said he is in favor of full marriage rights and wants a marriage bill. Uh, Rhode Island Governor Lincoln Chafee uh, has signed an executive order now that Rhode Island will uh, recognize out-of-state same-sex marriages. There was an earlier rights. opinion that said they should do that, but now it's official. And he came out for full marriage equality and said the legislature should pass a bill. And Harry Reid, the, uh, the the leader of the, the Democratic leader of the Senate, the majority leader of the Senate, Jack Reid from Rhode Island, the senator came out for it. Steny Hoyer, yes. who was the number two to Nancy Pelosi in yep. the House and the yep. Democratic side, who had resisted this for a long time, yep. gave a little garbled speech, but he came out for it. The chair of the Democratic Party in Georgia. Georgia has announced that he is in favor of marriage equality because he has a, an LGBT community member who is a member of his family. But you know, we, we owe this all to Danny O'Donnell. We do? Well, Danny. Happy to give him credit. Danny, uh, says, you know, the president was up in Albany, New York right before this. Yes. And Danny said, when I spoke with President Obama yesterday at Albany uh, Complex, I shared my experience leading the legislative battle for marriage equality in New York, my own recent wedding, blah, 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 blah. Asked the president to remember how important the issue is to so many, and I hope to put another human face to the issue. And... The next, the next day. With, uh, the next, within a day or two, the president is out there. Thank you, Danny. Well, I mean. I was afraid we were going to have to give credit to Andrew Cuomo because uh, <laughs> the president was there to see him. And I thought he'd say, don't worry, I got a, lot, a big bump out of this. Well, he was influenced by what happened in New York. Sure. Because he saw what happened. Yeah. Now you can march in the gay pride parade, Barack, and you will get a lot of cheers <laughs> as well. Now, I'm not happy that he spent so much time after doing this calling all the megachurch pastors all the right-wing pastors uh, assuring him, them that, you know, they what? didn't have to uh, go along or, the, or getting their input or, you know, and part of his interview with Robin Roberts was about, I'm a Christian and this is about uh, the golden rule. And, you know, please, can we make the distinction between religion and civil marriage it, and get religion out of this? It, I agree with you. Uh, in this country, it's almost impossible. Marriage is balled up with religion for a lot of people. Yes, they need to change the language. He is now the first president to say the words marriage equality, which he said yes. at the gay fundraiser yes. with Ricky Martin, who introduced him. Ricky Martin, who once did a thing for George Bush. <laughs> so, But welcome back to the fold, uh, yeah. Ricky. You're doing very well in Evita. Uh, but I, I really, uh, and you know, one of these people he called, uh, Reverend Joel Hunter, who is one of his five uh, pastoral counselors that he calls all the time, who is a you know, conservative megachurch pastor. Uh, he was interviewed after speaking to Obama, and he said, you know, I don't agree with him, and, but I assured him our relationship was fine. But I'm really, you know, I am convinced that this will mean that churches will be required to perform same-sex marriages. No. Well, and they will not get off this well, uh, uh, horse. Tony Perkins and all the other right-wingers who go on the shows now are always very quick to say what this is about is, re re they mean religious people are going to be forced to, you know, bring flowers to gay weddings and all this other kind of stuff. And some church facilities are going to have to rent out for gay weddings, this kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff that they want to raise in yes. terms of religious freedom. Well, that's the, that is their theme this uh, year. I am impressed by, as I say, the uh, all the politicians we name, Democrats in general switching from civil unions to marriage as their... Uh, their position. And what I felt in the, the 24 hours when it began to sweep through me was that this issue had moved from the edge where people were afraid of it to the mainstream where now people could be aggressively supporting it and that that was the shift that 
it used to be that if you supported it, you had to be, you know, had to fight for that, you had to be afraid of what people would say. And now with the president backing it, the tide has turned. Well, the president's campaign, which was trying to say Joe Biden really didn't come out for same-sex marriage, immediately put an ad out after the president came out for it, attacking Romney on it this. It was great, it's a great ad. Uh, and what's also interesting is the extent to which uh, the official Republicans, Romney and a lot of others, are not ramming this down anyone's throat yet. Well, everybody knows about it. But they're they're saying, you know, Rin, what's his name? Rance, Rand Paul? No, oh, no Rance Rand Priebus, Priebus, the head of the Republican National Committee goes on TV and he's asked about it and he says, you know, this is wrong, I'm against it. But really, the issue is the economy. Well, Rance Priebus is somebody who has worked closely with the Clark Cooper and the Log Cabin Republican Club and wants wants to keep them in the fold. And I don't see how Log Cabin's going to be able to endorse Mitt Romney. Even Go Proud, <laughs> which is that far right gay <laughs> Republican group, has condemned Romney over this <laughs> and said, you're falling into the, the, the trap on social issues being set by Obama. <laughs> what does Ann Coulter have to say? <laughs> but I, uh, really, a lot of Republicans, they, uh, and a Republican pollster put out this memo that said uh, uh, Republicans should take at least a non-discrimination approach if not fully endorsing marriage. I think they are really afraid of going too far too fast on this. They've already got a Mormon candidate, you know, <laughs> which is going to lose them some among the Who's, fundamentalists. Who and spoke like that. at Liberty University over the weekend? I watched that whole speech. I did too. I think they ban LGBT students. Uh, so he did his marriage as one man, one woman thing. But uh, the, but meanwhile, uh, our lovely mayor Michael Bloomberg, who we don't like was at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill giving a commencement address, and he blasted North Carolina for voting for uh, well, Amendment I, I, 1. I would hardly call it an angry blast, but he, but he said that, you know, he spoke up for same-sex marriage in the context of the speech, and he got a nice round of applause for it <laughs> at a university yep. because young people are on our side. The North Carolina Amendment did pass 61 to 39. Ugh. There were some immediate calls to move the Democratic Convention out of North Carolina, but it's considered such an important swing state that no one wants it's to. Not that, that, that's not that. I mean, I can't imagine. And I, as I said, when people suggested that, where are you going to move? <laughs> I mean, most of the states well, ban same-sex marriage, uh, including California. Oh, well, well, we can name six or seven that don't. Exactly. Uh, but the the sad thing is that, as predicted, uh, Republicans moved immediately to revoke domestic partnership benefits oh, for gracious. public employees. Uh, there, our side is uh, ginning up some lawsuits about that, but that's going to be a huge fight. Governor Bev Perdue got in a lot of trouble because she said, my God, people are going to think we're like Mississippi. And the fact is, <laughs> North, North Carolina is considered uh, you know, a more progressive southern Absolutely. state. It did well, vote for Obama by 14,000 votes. And the urban areas in North Carolina voted against the amendment. They weren't enough to overcome the rural areas, but... Four uh, of them. <laughs> no, I think there were six counties uh, well, out maybe. of a hundred or well, something. And we don't like to engage in triumphalism, but it just is a fact that the guy who was the chief sponsor of the bill passed away, I think, the, uh, the, the really? day before the vote. Yes. Uh, say, meanwhile, same-sex couples immediately responded to the vote by uh, engaging in demonstrations and civil disobedience at uh, marriage bureaus. We have a picture of... Uh, a uh, couple of women who got arrested there uh, doing a demonstration. Good for them. We are not taking this lying down. The state senator's name was James Forrester. And it's also true that in the middle of this, uh, the out gay representative Marcus Brandon in North Carolina won his Democratic primary for re-election. Because there are pockets of... Uh, blue state. Well, of course, it is a, it is a blue state yeah. at the moment. And this is, of course, the, the $64,000 question. In these swing states, which where same-sex marriage is not very popular, Florida, you know, North Carolina, et cetera, what is this going to do to the election? And the thing is, people say they're going to vote on the economy, but you don't know. You don't know. And I'm not sure that does us any better uh, good. But all of this is six months down the road. I 
contend it's too early to know. And we told you last week that it looked like the Colorado Civil Unions bill was going to get killed, and it was in the, in the regular session by the House Republican leader. And so Governor Hickenlooper, was that his name? Yeah. Called a special session. So they passed, they did pass some more right-wing bills during the special well, session. That's the unfortunate part. But they wouldn't, he, he shunted off the civil unions bill to a committee that was sure to kill it. And they did by a 5-4 vote. Yeah. Folks, this, now this is where party makes a difference because they've got a very narrow majority, Republican majority. If you can turn that around, you can get this bill out because there are some Republicans willing to vote for it, but there they is, weren't allowed to. Uh, there is some expectation that it will change. But here's the really sad thing and the real uh, evidence of party loyalty. Uh, one of the Republicans who voted in that five to four committee decision to kill the civil unions bill was a man with a gay son. And he talked about how difficult it was for him to make this decision, but he had to represent his constituents oh, in please, southwest please. Colorado. On the other hand, the Times did a big story about how this is personal for a lot of people, and a lot of the people who do vote for us are people who have gay relatives. But there's a lot of thinking that in Colorado in November, they will flip control of the House from yeah. Republican to Democrat. They only need a, a change of one or two seats. And there is a prominent out gay Democratic House member who has been the leader on this bill and who may become the majority leader of the House if they do flip the House. Now, w what about what's going on in the our House of Representatives, our National House of Representatives, where they're passing all these amendments uh, to bar the Department of Justice from opposing the Defense of Marriage Act? Uh, it's meaningless because what it says is that the uh, funds, federal funds, cannot be used by uh, the Department of Justice in contravention of DOMA. And Obama is continuing to enforce DOMA, uh, contrary to what the New York Times tells us. And I wrote them an angry letter, which they haven't done anything about because they've repeated this mistake. Obama is enforcing the Defense of Marriage Act. For the most part. <laughs> but he is opposing it in court. He is arguing yes. that it is unconstitutional, but he is continuing to enforce it. And the amendment that the House has inserted in the defense bill is only about not using funds uh, in uh, opposition to enforcing DOMA. Right. So it's actually a meaningless uh, move on their part. Now, in New York, we, we've told you that we, one of the ways we passed same-sex marriage was we got four Republican state senators to vote for it. Well, one of them, even though he's gotten a ton of money from the gay community and others, James Alessi, uh, from up there uh, in, I believe, uh, the Albany. Well, anyway, he is uh, not going to run. Buffalo, I think. No, uh, that's Grisanti. That's Grisanti. This guy's, yeah. Well, anyway, he's not running uh, again. Uh, yeah. But he's got other problems. And yes, that's one does. of the reasons he's not running. Yeah. Can we get to Romney as yes, a bully? Yes, please. All right. So then in the wake, the day after, the Washington Post held its story. Did they? A day. Did they? Yes, they did, because they didn't want well, to be It was going to come accused. out that day? It was going to come out the day Obama announced for yeah. marriage equality. But they held it a day so they wouldn't be accused of uh, juxtaposing inappropriately. But in fact, you know, 24 hours, big deal. And it was the perfect follow-up to Obama's announcement to make the contrast. Uh, Mitt Romney was revealed in a Washington Post story, long investigative report, oh, no, really long. About his entire time. high school career. Uh, many, many misdeeds. At Cranbrook. Cranbrook Private Boys School in where, Detroit. Where uh, Edmund White, who now supports same-sex marriage, the famous <laughs> gay author who's quite, you know, was not so much into it, but he went there too. <laughs> So the story is that Romney at Cranbrook uh, did things like uh, judged his classmates by what their parents did and how much money they had and did not like the poorer ones. Well, he was very, he was, he was very square, although he was a prankster, as he will admit. I think he was uh, a nasty prankster. Nasty he, piece of work. He, led a, he led a blind teacher into a door, right. smack into a door, and that's laughed not, about that's it. That's not funny. And there was a kid in class who... Uh, who effeminate. It was effeminate. So he would sit there going like... Like this, at a girl. That's the, what he would do. Yes, he was a pig. 
I knew some of you at Chaminade High School like that. Uh, <laughs> and not all of you were, of course, and some, you know. But the uh, heart of the story was that there was this kid in his dorm who came back from spring vacation with his hair bleached blonde and falling over one eye. And Romney's reaction was, he can't do that. He can't look like that. And he rounded, Romney rounded up. Well, this was 1965. Up. I'm saying this. The, the, somebody. Look, he was, I was in high school. Oh, I'm in not defending. I'm, I'm saying this. This that you know, a person who made any kind of a fashion statement then, you know, at a at a, at a prep school was. You do not then round up. Of course Five not. friends, including members of the wrestling team. No, I'm trying to take go, your no, scissors. Right. I'm trying to go back to the fact. I understand that to understand how unhinged Romney got over this yes. because he is a pig. Well, you can. Uh, criticize, but to become that unhinged was not appropriate even Ever. in 1965. Uh, so he rounds up his friends a as a posse and as a vigilante group, they go after this kid. And, the fact and they is, pin him down and he is screaming and crying. crying right. And Romney cuts his hair. And the fact is, it's a very vivid image. And the five witnesses remember it vividly and with regret. It is a, they Every said, it, they said I don't know, a black mark on my character, some of them, they, they said. And then Romney comes along and says he doesn't remember it. And one of the But guys, I'm sorry if, if anything, anybody's feelings were hurt. One, the kid who was attacked is now dead. He died a few years ago. One of these guys He was a gay it, guy. Uh, well, the family objects to the this, and I suspect their objection, without having said so explicitly, is identifying him as gay. I don't know whether he was gay, uh, and I don't think it matters whether he of was gay. Not. And I think this distraction about, well, we didn't call people gay then, we weren't aware of it, is total nonsense. Oh, well, wait a minute. That's another thing that we have to take on Romney for, because one of his defenses in this, well, they're saying it was because of his sexual orientation. None of us ever thought of that in 1960. That is a bunch of nonsense. Just, you know, Stonewall didn't invent homosexuality. People were gay baiting people in the cave person. Uh, I was era. gay baited at school at exactly that time. So I was because too. Because I was a little, a little obvious about my crush on my gym teacher. Well, I started school in 67, and I was gay baited for sure. Well, I started before then. And uh, when I realized that people were noticing my crush, I really shut down about it. But, um, but the but the it doesn't matter. What matters is that he was a bully, and he went after this kid, and he uh, physically attacked him. And uh, here is an ABC News report about what happened. Presidential candidate Mitt Romney accused of bullying a very vulnerable fellow student when he was in high school. Five of Romney's former classmates have come forward to tell the same story, accusations creating a firestorm as Romney is forced to respond. And David Muir, who covers the Romney campaign, has been tracking this story all day. Fast moving, David. Very fast moving, Diane. It comes just 24 hours, of course, after President Obama said he now supports gay marriage. So a lot of questions about the timing of this story first reported in the Washington Post this morning. But when you read the details, these are grown men, a lawyer, a dentist, a former principal who all went to school with Mitt Romney and remember more than just a prank. One of them telling us tonight this was supreme bullying. Mitt Romney today said he does not remember the incident. Tonight, one of Mitt Romney's former high school classmates at the prestigious Cranbrook School in Michigan tells ABC News the incident was supreme bullying and that the teenage boys, himself included, acted like a pack of dogs. That classmate, Philip Maxwell, now a lawyer, offered more on a scene first reported today by the Washington Post, telling ABC News that Mitt Romney was part of a group of students who targeted a boy, another student who most thought was gay and who had dyed his long hair blonde with peroxide. Maxwell told us late today, it's a haunting memory. I think it was for everybody that spoke up about it. Because when you see somebody who is simply different, taken down that way, and is terrified, and you see that look in their eye, you never forget it. Maxwell says he and Romney were among the boys who held the student down. I had an arm and leg. He was pinned down by the state champion wrestler, the captain of the football team. This was bullying supreme. Maxwell says Romney was holding the scissors. I saw with my own eyes. It was a hack job, clumps of hair taken off. Today, Mitt Romney was asked about the account, first reported in the Washington Post. 
Uh, I had no idea what uh, that individual's sexual orientation might be. Uh, going back to the 1960s, that wasn't something that uh, we all discussed. I don't recall the incident myself, but I've, I've seen the reports and I'm uh, not going to argue with that. Uh, uh, there's no question but that uh, I did some stupid things when I was in high school. And obviously, if I hurt uh, anyone by virtue of that, I, I would be very sorry for it and apologize for it. And while Romney says he does not remember the incident, the campaign, even Ann Romney, has often celebrated Romney's joking nature. This is the boy that I knew. Yeah. I still look at him as the, as the boy that I met <laughs> yeah. in high school when he was playing all the jokes. Meantime tonight, another Romney classmate, Greg oh, Durth, came me. to Romney's defense today, saying he did not witness the event, but had a vague recollection of it. It's kind of like when somebody comes to a pool party and you threaten to throw them in and maybe somebody actually does. My suspicion is that they uh, jokingly uh, said, hey, let's go cut his hair uh, and went down the hall. And, and, you know, you hold the scissors close to his ear and you make a lot of snipping sounds uh, and, you know, you, you, uh, you may traumatize the guy a little or scare the guy a little, um, but no harm, no foul. Coming to Romney's defense tonight, I did ask that other former classmate, Philip Maxwell, the man who described that scene in such detail, is he a Democrat, is he a Republican? He says he's voted for both, and in fact, he says he would have voted for George Romney, Mitt Romney's father, had he won the nomination. He said he still considers Mitt Romney an old friend, but says this was a scene that Maxwell himself says he has struggled with for years. I've got to tell you, Diane, I talked with political strategists today who said voters often carry what happened to them in high school very close to the vest as they go through life. But another viewer emailed me just, just before we came on tonight saying, I don't care what Romney did back in the 60s. Well, that's the question. We don't usually hear about high school in a presidential campaign. Is the timing of this just too suspicious? I think a lot of people will ask that question given what we heard from the White House just yesterday. But these are grown men who describe the scene in very similar detail. Well, the question isn't, uh, you know, necessarily what happened 50 years ago. The question is how he ha how he's handling it now. When he was when the story was recounted to him, he chuckled during the uh, interview, uh, like when he was hearing about it. <laughs> well, you know, I was just like still trying to treat this like a joke. I remember all the bad things I did in my life. I have to say, I remember them vividly. That you 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 have those regrets until the day you die when you really treated somebody miserably, and uh, you know he remembers. And he's lying. I object to the fact that ABC included in their uh, report the guy who was not there and then made up this story about they were just snipping by his ear. Clearly, That's absolutely stupid. wrong. Uh, but maybe an example of the way Romney now thinks of it. And to me, sure, you want to make an excuse about something that happened 50 years ago? You want to say you changed? You want to say you deeply well, you regret don't, it? You don't make an excuse. You say... <laughs> I did something. I did, I did a yes. terrible thing. Yes. And he I'm did, sorry, he period. Did, he and it's did, over. He did not say that. And to me, this is part of a pattern. Uh, I have always felt that Romney had a real angry streak and a real bitter streak inside him and a real nasty streak. Look at how he went after people in his audience time and time again uh, during the primaries. You know, corporations are people, my friends. Uh, he, he just attacks people when he feels Cornered. attacked, yes, and or angry about something. And he has this facade where everyone is supposed to think he's a nice guy, but it is clearly inauthentic. And at best, he has several sides, and one of them is a very angry side. And I think we ignore that at our peril, as right. they say. So while the president goes off and speaks to Barnard and gives a, a, a rousing women's rights and gay rights speech, <laughs> Romney goes off to Liberty University. And Lawrence O'Donnell picked up on this, and we, we disagree about that, he, but he had this quote. There is no greater force for good in the nation than Christian conscience in action. And what Lawrence O'Donnell said is, would you have said, you know, what about Jewish conscience or atheist conscience or anybody else's conscience? It was all about, you said he said Judeo-Christian. Uh, earlier, but, uh, you know, his whole thing is to try to uh, Make ingratiate, him think he's a Christian. ingratiate himself with the uh, Christian evangelicals. Oh, That's called, why I was there in the first he place. He called Jerry Falwell a cheerful champion for uh, Christ. Yeah, he was a, a, talk about a real pig. Yeah. All right, well... So I, I think it is a wonderful demonstration of the differences. I think people are getting it, uh, and I think that's a, a terrific thing. Okay. All right, let's move on to other things. Well, uh, terrible news today that in Virginia, the legislature has rejected 
the judgeship uh, candidacy of our old pal Tracy Thorne Beglin. You yeah. may remember Tracy Thorne is a Navy pilot who was one of the first to come out in the military and stand up and say, I'm gay and challenge, don't ask, don't tell. Remember him. They flew me down to uh, Tidewater to testify at his court martial <laughs> as an expert on homosexuality. <laughs> They did not. They did not let me testify down there. But his lawyers brought me down there, and I met the guy. And he was. A, he, he was. I had no idea that he'd gone on to this life as a prosecutor yeah. for twelve years in Two Virginia. Two kids. And this is the only out of three dozen judicial nominees. This is the only one the legislature rejected. The GOP-controlled House of Delegates. Uh, did we show the picture of him? We got a yeah, yeah. picture of Tracy. Well, uh, I mean. It, it, he needed 51 votes. He got 33 votes. Even some Democrats took a walk. They were afraid of it. Now, Governor Bob McDonald, who's a far right winger, d was asked about this. And he said, oh, they ought to be merit based. It should be based on a skill, uh, you know, the, not on unrelated factors and all this other kind of stuff. But the right wing is calling him a gay activist because yeah. he got married. Yeah. You know, to his partner. And because he challenged don't ask, don't tell. Yes. They're saying, yeah, well, I mean, he didn't obey orders. He, you know. Yeah, he, was... he came out. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, don't ask, don't tell has been repealed now. <laughs> so you were on the wrong side of history there. Uh, oh, Tracy. Well, so. um, a Senate committee has agreed to hold a hearing on the Employment Non-Discrimination Act on yeah. June 12th. Well, because the Republicans all say, uh, my favorite beat, of course, that nutcase from Florida, Alan West. Oh, there is no discrimination against gay people. Did you hear the story we just told in Virginia? Right. Uh, a House committee is, has deleted uh, the LGBT community from the Violence Against Women Act. Big fight going on about that right now because the Senate passed the bill with uh, LGBT people included. Do you remember Paul Babieu? Yes, I do. He was the Arizona sheriff who was running for Congress out there, was considered a leading candidate until he was, uh, until he had to come out after he was exposed by his partner who he was trying to have deported. Um, anyway. Suppose, allegedly. All right. Anyway, he has dropped out of the race for Congress because he realized he has to come back and run for sheriff because the, the other guy who was running for sheriff who we wanted uh, has run into some uh, yes. trouble. Uh, one of my favorite stories of the week, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops is now going after the Girl Scouts. Oh, yeah, well. Now, a quick explanation. Boy Scouts, bad. Girl Scouts, good. Not because boys are bad and girls are good, but because the Boy Scouts exclude gays, atheists, uh, gay scoutmasters, and all that kind of stuff, and the Girl Scouts welcome them. The Girl Scouts have always had an open door policy and been very progressive. It's sort of like nuns and priests. <laughs> yes, very like that. So the Conference of Catholic Bishops has noticed that the Girl Scouts are a progressive organization, and because there are a lot of parish-sponsored Girl Scout troops, which makes me sad, uh, they are now investigating the Girl Scouts. Just like they're investigating the nuns. Because they have coalitions with uh, groups like Doctors Without Borders and the Sierra Club well, and Oxfam. That sounds um, like, almost like the Communist Party exactly. or the Ku Klux Klan or yes. something. Don't well, they ever listen. get tired of this? Well, but the, but the interesting thing is what's happening in some Catholic schools. Now, we told you about that student who was supposed to get a Matthew Shepard scholarship. Uh, his name is Keaton Fuller. This is in Clinton, Iowa, at a Catholic school. And then the bishop said, you can't, you can't have this presented to you Publicly. During, during the graduation ceremony. Well, they've reached some kind of a compromise on it where he is going to get the scholarship presented to him. Uh, with a statement read by the diocesan superintendent of schools, which will be cleared for doctrinal <laughs> purity, because we're not against bullying. We're, I mean, we're, we're not for bullying, the, the church is trying to say. We're just against gay love. <laughs> including in Lexington, Kentucky, where Catholic high school there barred a lesbian couple from the prom at the door. But the good <laughs> They were walking in and they got told, no. Tiffany Wright and Hope the, Decker. Is that like being rejected at the inn and sent to the stable? No, but you, but, you know, uh, they were told by school administrators that they uh, 
could not attend because of the church's stand on same-sex relationships. Now, they weren't going to be doing any uh, sex on the floor of the thing. Well, is, it, is dancing against church well, doctrine? A, as one of them pointed out, do they bar heterosexual couples from the dance who uh, are having premarital sex or who are planning to go out and get drunk later? But the good news is that uh, 107 students at the school signed a, a, a thing for them, and they celebrated the prom outside the door. With In the parking lot. With other students yes. who came out to support them. They set up their own impromptu prom in the parking lot. They played music from their car radios. They, uh, they laid out refreshments, and they had a great time in the parking lot. These women are going to be taking over your church, uh, Cardinal, or whoever you are who's stopping them. They're going to be taking over the church, finally. Catholics are going to stand up to this nonsense. I would also like to point out that this couple, an 18-year-old and a 16-year-old, went to the prom openly together, held their prom in the parking lot when they were rejected, and Robin Roberts is still in the closet. <laughs> right, exactly. And then there's the brave Dynasty Young, the bullied student in Indianapolis who was expelled because his mother gave him a stun gun, and he fired it off in the air, and then they, they expelled him from school over this. Yep. So it became Suspended. A He's been suspended from school. Well, okay. He's allowed to go back in January oh. or something. Well... He was at a downtown mall, the case got a lot of publicity, and some guy beat the crap out of him, and at least they, uh, uh, ca they captured the uh, suspect Yeah, they case. arrested him. And then a, a terrible story uh, from uh, Brooklyn, where a suspicious fire uh, killed a transgendered person uh, who had been arguing with some people right beforehand. This is uh, uh, a, 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 a transgender person named Escalara who was a ver part of the celebrated group of transgender performers at the House of Extravaganza. Mm. Uh, and this week, a bomb threat was called in to the LAPD threatening to blow up the gay building in Washington, which uh, was taken to mean possibly the HRC building, possibly the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force building. Uh, those all got evacuated, examined, dogs, everything, and nothing was found and everybody went back in as we tape. Well, violence is sort of the last gasp of a, a losing, you know, minority. Threats of violence, you know, yeah. 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 Uh, well, and violence, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know. Yes. Lashing out, anger, you got to believe this is a lot of anger at uh, the president and what's going on. But luckily, as we tape on Tuesday, everyone seems to be fine. Uh, the uh, Get Equal was had been planning to go to the White House to do a big civil disobedience to complain about uh, uh, the president's slowness. But when he came out for marriage, they changed it and they went and did a demonstration saying, Okay, thank you for marriage. Now please sign the executive order forcing federal contractors not to discriminate in well. hiring. Might yeah. as well at this point. Well, they're still get, on do it. Do I but get my five dollars to... back from you? No, because he hasn't done it. Uh, no, and if this, he doesn't. Oh, maybe. Uh, and the San Diego City Council ha went ahead and renamed uh, Blaine Avenue in the Hillcrest District Harvey Milk Street. I think it's the first Harvey Milk Street in the country. I think so. And they've made up signs and everything already. Some international news. Okay. Uh, the International Lesbian and Gay Association has rated countries in Europe, and the highest rated is, I was surprised to see, the United Kingdom. Uh, you would think it would be someplace like the Netherlands, but they, or Spain, yeah, whatever. And then the uh, well, Germany and Spain are second, and Sweden and Belgium, and way down on the list are like Moldova, Russia, Armenia, or you know, Belarus. Yeah, but meanwhile, the Queen's speech to uh, Parliament omitted marriage rights uh, on her agenda because the right wing objected. But uh, aides to Prime Minister David Cameron promise it's still going to happen. They're slow walking things. Yeah. Uh, Argentina, the legislature passed a bill making it easier for transgender people to change their identity on their ID and to get health care coverage from the federal government for hormones and surgery. Horrible news out of Iran, where the courts have sentenced four men to death 
uh, hang, by hanging for sodomy. Now the problem is, you know, when you when you we don't know if it's just because of consensual sex or you know they always say well there was a rape charge. But the thing is, they don't distinguish rape from consensual sex when it comes to gay stuff. Right. It's all sodomy, and they're going to put these four guys to death. Yeah. Horrible. Uh, but better news from Chile. Uh, you remember we've been following the murder of Daniel Zamudio, who was uh, brutally murdered by neo-Nazis there, and that caused an enormous uproar in the country and led to the passage now of an, a hate crimes bill that includes sexual orientation and gender identity. It had been stalled for years, but this case has really had an impact in Chile. But the National Organization for Marriage here in this country, all these heinous Maggie Gallagher, Brian Brown types, sent a representative to Chile. Oh, it sounds to, like a sounds like a junket. To argue that sounds like against they wanted a vacation. this bill. I think they wanted a trip to to Latin America. Well, nonetheless, they sent <laughs> someone down there. But now Chile is talking about uh, moving ahead to civil unions next, possibly. And they had a gay pride uh, uh, march festival in uh, Cuba, in Havana. 400 people marching, marching through the sweltering streets. And the, the daughter of Cuban President Raul Castro uh, said that her father advocated eliminating sexual discrimination and reiterated her hope that the country would soon legalize same-sex marriage. Now, she's uh, been saying Mariella, this for years. exactly, yeah. has been very. She yeah. likes to, you know. But you know what? That's how you make things happen by putting it out. She's like Joe Biden down there. <laughs> she's putting it out there, and then Raul is going to have to come along. We'll see. All right, AIDS news. Well, there is a big headline in AIDS news this week because the anti -retro antiviral drugs advisory committee of the Food and Drug Administration, which looks at things and then makes recommendations to the FDA, has recommended that the FDA approve Truveda, which is a two-drug combination of antiretroviral drugs, for use by non uh, infected people by HIV negative people as pre-exposure prophylaxis in, now, for high risk people. Now, one of the knocks on this is that it's expensive and that it may be get it hard to get it covered, although they cover things like Viagra, you know, but you know, it's, it's expensive. So is it going to be a rich person's drug? Well, wants there, to, wants to there are a number of caveats. Well, First for, of all... Well, it's not going to be... The, the decision is going to be made on June 15th, so yes, stay tuned. Yes, it has not been made yet. This is a recommendation from the panel, the advisory committee. But here are some of the caveats. This is a two-drug combination. For those who are HIV positive, uh, this drug is in common use, but in combination with other drugs. It is not appropriate to take this drug by itself if you are HIV positive. So the first thing you have to do is be tested to find out if you are HIV positive, because then you should be on a, a more comprehensive drug regimen if you decide to take drugs. So this, is, this drug alone is strictly for people who are not HIV positive. Now, and it can have some side effects, including kidney damage. So it needs, you need to be monitored uh, closely and continuously if you are on this drug. It is therefore recommended only for those who are at high risk. Uh, uh, prostitutes. Uh, Porn industry. People where there's who, a lot of bareback sex. Uh, people who are in relationships with a partner who is HIV positive. Uh, men having sex, uh, unprotected sex frequently with other men uh, without knowing HIV status. Uh, so it's it's being recommended for high-risk populations. And because it is not 100% effective in preventing HIV infection, which is why you would be taking it, the recommendation is to still practice safe sex uh, and to take it consistently. The big worry is, and this happened in the testing, people did not take it consistently, and that left them open to uh, drug resistance, more side effects. So uh, it's, a, it's a great idea, theoretically, to be able to take a drug if you are in a high-risk situation that will prevent HIV infection, 
but there are a lot of issues with it, so it's not something... But people are already starting to do it, even with these caveats, even if they're not so high I risk. knew people who used to take prophylactic, you know, uh, uh, antibiotics back in the 60s and things and yeah. for stuff for various venereal diseases. Having not, just not had not a, a bad good experience idea. with an not antibiotic. Not a good idea. Don't do it. Uh, better to practice safe sex. Always. Yes. And um, really always. Uh, uh, um, Good Entertainment news? Well, oh, no. good Are report you... that meth use has dropped 50% in the last five years. You know, we okay. talked about the big campaigns against that. And there was a story about, we talked about the fact that abstinence education from the Heritage Keepers was approved by the, yeah. by the HHS. Yeah. Well, I, I read a story about why this happened. It's because they had all these different criteria and you only had to meet like some of them to get on the approved list, even though, and that's what happened with this thing. But, it's, but the, the advocates are saying, this is just a terrible thing to it do. It is a terrible okay. thing. All right, uh, entertainment news. Uh, get your tickets. National Coming Out Day in Brooklyn. Barbara Streisand will be performing at the new Barclays Center. Not everyone is crazy about this new development in Brooklyn, but they're booking a lot of big acts, right. and she happens to be doing it on National Coming Out Day. You've heard of the 11. Mark Twain Prize for comedy, essentially. A big national prize that they give out at the Kennedy Center with a big thing, you know, Bill Cosby, people like that got it. Well, Ellen DeGeneres has been selected to receive that prize uh, the next time they give it. This year. Uh, John Travolta all <laughs> over the entertainment news shows this week being charged with sexual harassment, assault, and battery on various three masseurs. different Three different accusers. These are, many he, times it sounds like he's getting a massage and then he, and then he engages in an appropriate touch. Yeah. Of course, the rap on him as a star has been that he inappropriately hits on, you know, young actors who are around, you know, the set and things like that. Uh, this is the rumor. He's a creep. We have no pictures. We have no actual proof, but it is the long-standing storyline. His lawyer claims this is all about people just trying to make money. We don't know the truth. He says but it's we... absurd and ridiculous. I don't think it's absurd and ridiculous. Uh, interesting news. Uh, May 19th, this weekend, uh, there will be Tijuana, Mexico, is celebrating Cultural Days Against Homophobia. This is part of the International Days Against uh, homophobia and transphobia, and the U.S. consulate in Tijuana is offering free round-trip buses from San Diego to Tijuana and back to San Fantastic. Diego. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, I have a correction from last week. I was talking about nice work if you can get it, and one of the nice things about it was that Estelle Parsons comes on as Matthew Broderick's mother at the end of the show. Apparently, I said Elaine Stritch. Yes, you did. I don't know how that got out of my mouth. I know Estelle Parsons, but... Just shoot me now, is what I have to say. <laughs> I'm not going to shoot you, but if I'd known you'd done that, I would have All right. corrected it. Uh, Thank you, Betty White, who says she's usually apolitical, but she very, very much favors Obama this year. He must be for animal rights, because <laughs> yes. that's her issue. Yes. Uh, Lady Gaga has been uh, banned from an Indonesian gig, which was going to be the biggest thing on her tour for her Born This Way tour, because they say she will corrupt the youth there. She had already sold out 52,000 seats, that's but gone. But the big news is the punk rock group Against Me, uh, which of course we're not familiar with. Got a picture of this guy, Has Tom a lead Gable. singer, Tom Gable, well, who... Well, he's transitioning. That's why he looks like that now. And I guess we will start referring whatever... Oh, yes. Laura he, Jane Grace. He's going to change his name to Laura Jane but Grace. But the point is there's a big interview with him in the current issue of Rolling Stone. Uh, he's married to a woman and has a two-year-old daughter. First and major rock star to come out as transgender. Will remain married. He's 31 years old. You can read all about it in uh, Rolling Stone. Bill and I saw the play uh, Pool No Water by the gay playwright Mark Ravenhill. Very smart play. Big rave review in the Times, so it'll probably be a hard ticket now. But we thought it was smart, if not you know, uh, totally uh, engaging. And but it's only an hour, <laughs> just like this show. We'll be back next week to see what news we missed between the time we tape and the time the show airs. Bye.